Karen Bryan here for MMA Heat, speaking with Felicia Spencer, who is taking on Amanda Nunes in the main event at UFC 250. Felicia, this is a huge opportunity, a great opportunity for you. Um, you know, what do you think of first and foremost when you think of this? You're a former champ elsewhere, but what do you think of first when, when, when this opportunity comes to you? I'm just so grateful for it. You know, I know I'm in a unique position with uh, being in this division, by the way, division and, and you know, with, with just my placement here. Like, um, I know I've worked really hard to earn this spot, but I also know, like, I'm in a unique spot and, and uh, I'm grateful to have the opportunity uh, and I'm 100% ready to go in there and to take that belt home. Yeah. Well, it's amazing because Amanda is so good, right? This is a, an incredible woman. And you and I, I think we spoke about this before. The fact that you uh, went five rounds with Cyborg, even though you didn't win, people treated that like you just won, like you just won the best fight, that everything, like what a victory that was for you to even <laughs> stay in there with her. Um, so now, of course, when you consider Amanda defeated Chris, a lot of people are thinking it's a real uphill battle. So what do you say to them? Yeah, well, I mean... It's the, I mean, we talk about it all the time. MMA math just does not always add up. You know, right. styles make fights. And I think this is a really good fight for me. I think my style poses a lot of, um, a lot of problems that Amanda doesn't, hasn't encountered with other fighters. You know, um, I think I'm, I'm more of a grinding fighter. And I think, uh, I think there's a lot, a lot to see here. I think, um, I'm just so excited. I, I just smile all the time about it because I'm just so excited to have, a. To have the platform to be able to to, uh, to win, and I, I know um, I'm going to shock a lot of people. And uh, you know, at the same time, I, I'm, it doesn't take away from what she's done. You know, she's still even losing her title to me would she's still one of the greatest. You know, yes. there's always the argument. All everything that she's done is still there. It's still intact. Um, I'm just going to be taking my belt home, and that's <laughs> that's about it. And, I'm um, still a big fan of Amanda's too. <laughs> it's great. And you're so fully Canadian in this moment right now. Like, <laughs> like just so sweet and smiley and like, you know, I mean, bless you. That's yeah. why we love Canadians. Um, I, I really mean that. <laughs> but yes, Amanda, in the past we have seen, um, there was trouble with her uh, in, gra in the ground game. But it seems that she's really sort of righted the ship there, though. So even though that is a great advantage for you, um, how difficult do you think it could be to try to get Amanda even down in the first place? I know it's going to be tough. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a hard fight. You know, I mean, I always say I, I want my goal is always to go in the first round and, and be done in the first round. You know, I never want to be in there longer than, than necessary. But, you know, I know probably it's going to take longer than one round to get to Amanda. You know, I'm, um, uh, I'm ready to go five hard rounds and. I've been ready. I've been ready. I was ready to fight on May 9th. Yeah. You know, that was the that was our date. So mm -hmm. these extra four weeks are just more reps for me. Yeah. You know, I'm feeling good. <laughs> I feel great. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's not going to be an easy fight, but yeah. I'm I'm up for the challenge if there was anyone. Well, obviously, there's a lot of challenges just in trying to train. Um, and your husband is a jujitsu fighter as well, right? For primarily uh, MMA all overall, but did he start in jujitsu as well? Um, it started with wrestling. With wrestling. Um, but okay. yeah, he's a stud either way. Okay, but nice. <laughs> but so a, you, you yeah. basically have a built-in training partner all the time then, right? I mean, like, so how much more um, difficult has this camp been for you, though, to get some other bodies to work with? Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, we don't we do not do a lot at home uh, you know, with each other. I mean, he's, he's a bit bigger, you right. know, also, and, and we wouldn't want to risk anything with yeah. this opportunity coming. You don't want to kick so, his ass and humble yeah. him too much anyway. Right. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, right away when things started to get a little crazy yeah. in the, you know, end of March or whenever it was, um, you know, I had I have a great team, and, and I sat down with my husband and my coaches, and we were – you know, like, okay, we need to pick one or two people that I can work with, yeah. and we're gonna like semi quarantine together. We're not, we didn't live together, so it wasn't that extreme. But we were like, okay, you and you, like, you're you're my guys. You're my, I, you know, it happened to be a girl and a guy. Yeah. Um, you know, we're gonna be in contact. We're gonna come to the gym and train in private sessions. Um, luckily, you know, the the my the coach, our coach, is also the owner of the gym, and. Yeah fully on board with this opportunity you know everyone we're bending over backwards to make this work you know so uh, we didn't we didn't look for excuses we found solutions is what we what we've been saying all along um so we were just you know we're going to be responsible with ourselves um outside of the training room and and i had i had a couple bodies that i was able to to work with which ideally you'd want a whole room full of bodies to work with you know but there's 
we're looking at the positives. You know, I've, I've um, taken a lot of really good things from the camp and how, how we had to do it. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've noticed is, you know, every moment that I'm in the gym training is so intentional. Like we're not, I'm not there hours and hours a day just taking, you know, taking classes, having fun, right, right, just right. drilling around with, you know, with some of the lower ranks or something. Yeah, like yeah. everything I'm doing is like, all right, I'm here. Let's get it done. Right. And then, lock the door and get out, you know, so, so it's been a little different, but it, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at all those, the, the great things that we've done and I feel great about it. So. Well, yeah, uh -huh. and you should, and it is a huge opportunity for you, but also you have to know that Amanda is very fired up for this fight too. If she is able to successfully defend that title, that is going to mean a whole lot. So, um, who do you think has more sort of riding on this fight? Um, you know, I think, I think I have the most, you know, as far as yeah. making a statement for the division and, and for myself. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that I have the most to gain for sure. Um, I, you know, and I also fully can admire her, her ambition to become the first mm -hmm. double champ that's actually actively defending both belts at the same time, yeah. which would be a huge deal. But, um, you know, I, her her goals. I mean, she if she reaches that goal, she's gonna set another higher goal. You know, right. that's what we do. We're fighters, so right. you know, she's she's already you know reached that goat status. She's already in that conversation, and you know, there's always gonna be another next level. But for right. me, this would be like the groundbreaking moment, yeah. you know, of the career. So so I think it's it definitely will be a, a huge just a huge deal for, for my career, my legacy to really begin with, with this win. Yeah. Well, and you, and you are a former champ as well. And you also, I mean, I think the thing going into this fight, a lot of people kind of, um, the critics will say, well, the division's not that deep and you know, there aren't that many girls for her to fight anyway. And so it's not really fair. What's great about you is you are a true 45er. It's not a story of a woman who came up and just tried to bulk up to fight a, a, a bigger woman. So, um, you have real ownership here, which is really great, which I also love about like Julia Budd over in Bellator. Like these are 45ers, kick-ass women, right? So um, with that said, you, you know, you've already accomplished a lot too for you to be in there with Chris and with Amanda. Like what, what do you want for your goals in terms of like when we look back on your own career because you're already being a major player in like very key fights for your division. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's definitely a, a big part of like, I guess I can't say it's like my my motivation mm -hmm. to like put my career or, or not my career my division in a good light yeah. but it's it's something that's on my mind you know yeah. like I know winning this belt will almost like legitimize the featherweight division yeah. you know like a featherweight won the title yes <laughs> it's which is just crazy to, to say that out loud but uh, yeah you know it's there, there aren't as many people fighting in the featherweight division, but I think part of that is just because there haven't been as many opportunities. You know, like when I, when I started fighting, there were definitely sorry, my dog was just pushing stuff around all the time. Okay. Um, but yeah, when I started fighting, you know, like the opportunities were so slim that it could, it could easily deter someone. Like, you know, I, I'll keep training, I love training, but you know, maybe I won't stress about fighting because it's not going to take me anywhere. But when the opportunities open up more people are going to be like, Hey, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Right. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Right. There's an opportunity, you know? So, uh, so I think it'll, I think it'll be slow. You know, it's obviously been a gradual development even in the, the UFC, but I think the more people see the opportunities, um, the more people will come out of the woodwork and, and hopefully they'll be, you know, filling up the roster a little bit more. Well, I hope so too, because obviously we get exciting fights and, in theory, the potential for more knockouts could be there um, with more power behind the punches and stuff. So there is that to be said. But but one thing that is difficult, and I'm sure you've heard this too, right, is that the critics, will, or critics, not even critics, that's not even the right word, the ones will be like, well, you know, we just like the cute girls. Like, we just like the little girls. Like, and, and you know what I'm talking about. And you know you are <laughs> Like, you know it. And and it's one of those things. I'm 5'8". Like, I'm, I'm not small, right? And so you see that. And you're like, yeah, no, I know those 15ers. Yeah, they're cute. They're, they're cute. But, like, <laughs> women are women, right? And so right. I, I don't even know what the point of my question here is. It's just, but, like, do you no, sense like, maybe the bias against some of the, the heavier weight class women and also sometimes the pressure that we have seen for girls to go down to a lighter weight class instead to be to be more marketable. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
it's been, I mean, we've seen it even with like the featherweight tough, you know, yeah. the ultimate fighter where, you know, they're fighting at, at the featherweight and then, you know, dropping down. Right. Like for me, I don't, I don't feel like I would be healthy dropping down, mm -hmm. you know, like just because something is physically possible. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> that means it's good for you. <laughs> to do that. And I, and for me, it was always like, well, what's the motivation for dropping weight? Um, right. I mean, I already cut weight. It's not like a walking around at 145 here, right. you know, yeah. um, the motivation for some people is so that they have a slight size advantage. Like right. I'm not afraid of anyone that's slightly bigger than me. Like bring it on. I, I fought at 170 as an amateur just to get a fight. You know, Are you like serious? I was fine. Yeah. Just the, the, no one wanted to fight. So I wow. just fight at uh, 170, you know, I'm having a great uh, weight cut week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously. Uh, bring yeah, it on. I mean, for me, I want to be the biggest, baddest woman out there. Yeah. So I'm going to take this division and run with it, you know? So, uh, but I understand like, yeah, there's, there's an appeal for a smaller or a certain look for, for the women. But right. I think the more, you know, it wasn't that long ago, women didn't even fight in the UFC right. and then things are opening up. The more people see it, the more normal it's going to feel. And then the more, the less that's going to matter, you yeah. know, the, the less that, um, it, the less is going to play such a big part because yes. It, you know, it is important to have good looking girls and, and good looking guys. You don't want to have just a roster full of like, you know, right. <laughs> I don't know, just a bunch of ugly people. Like, right, right, right. It, it is what it is, it's, but we're all human. Yes. So yeah, I mean, there's appeal for having uh, men that look like, you know, good looking athletes and also women that look like good looking athletes. Right. And then you can, uh, you know, once the divisions fill out, then I don't think people care so much. Um, when it's more legitimate feeling, yes. you know, like, especially with like this division, it's so small. It's like every person has like a spotlight on them and right. so, so judgy because there's hardly any of them. And, yeah. you know, I feel like it's getting less and less of that in the, in the, the women's divisions with the, with that bias. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you are so passionate, though, about what you do, um, and I really am looking forward to this fight. It's a, it's a big deal one, ideally for you. I mean, you, you came out when you blasted Megan with that fast submission, like, that was like, holy crap, like, but then you also obviously are able to put your hands together as well, but where, like, in your mind when you envision this, is there a specific way you would love to defeat Amanda? Um, wow, yeah, I mean, I would say I want to take her out in the first round. Like, I, you know, there aren't a lot of jujitsu girls, um, especially in my weight class. It seems like almost everyone's a striker by like, by um, that's their strength. Yeah. So it, it would be really cool to, you know, I heard, I think one of the promos, I think it was DC called me a jujitsu uh, ace. And I was yeah. like, Ooh, that, feels, that sounds cool. Yeah. You know, like that'd be really cool. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I said, I, I'm, I'm not going to shy away from throwing punches and kicks. Uh, it's always been like a, a fantasy to like get a head kick knockout, but nice. it's not like I'm going to go hunting for that. Like if it opens up, it's going to, I'm going to take it. But, right. um, but you know, I can, I can see it going to the ground just because that's where most of my fights end up right. going. But, uh, yeah, I don't force anything and I'm, um, just as excited as everyone else to find out how it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, that's a lot. And it's funny because I was talking to Mackenzie Dern the other day, and she's a jiu-jitsu specialist for sure, yeah, too. And, exactly. and it's the yeah. thing, like, I was telling her, you know, great. We love, like, it's cool. You're coming along and your hands are coming. But, like, to be honest, I want to see her submit somebody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so there is some, don't ever forget your fan base is what I guess I'm saying, right. Felicia. Yeah. Is that <laughs> there are a lot of people who, when we see a specialist, we like to see them do what they do great. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, 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 right. and while you want to develop and all this other stuff, but there's something really fun about just watching somebody who's amazing at what they right. do, do it again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Like when we're all watching Rhonda, you know, like exactly. a lot of people throw a lot of hate around, but like, it was exciting. It, it was. was really cool. It <laughs> really was. It stuff. really was. So, uh, yeah. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Felicia. Before we get out of here, I was wondering if you would do one other thing with me, which is play no wrong okay. answers. It's just three random questions. But first and foremost, let me okay. just say thank you so much for this today. And uh, best of luck in the main event against Amanda Nunes at USC 250. Thank you. I'm excited about this. <laughs> oh, my God.